what's up guys so on instagram and in some of the youtube comments i've been asked to go over my trans cooler a little bit more um, i'm gonna pop the hood take the grill off and show you just what i did um, this truck did not come with the transmission cooler from the factory it is a non-tow package truck so i went ahead and added one on my own uh, but i'll show you a few things of where the oem transmission cooler would have been and where i put mine and why so let's get to it All right guys, so here we go. The grill is off, relatively easy. It's just one clip here, uh, screw, screw, and a clip, and then a little pressure clip on each side and you pull it right out. So originally, when you get a tow package truck, you get an oil cooler, which this does not have. You get the trans cooler, which the hoses come right out of here and it bolts right here. It is about six or seven rows, I'm not sure. Uh, it's very, very small, uh, but the Hoses come from the other side on a metal tube all the way back, and then they stop. Then it's rubber tube up into these ports on the radiator. I have these capped because I'm not using the transmission cooler in the radiator. I decided to go fully independent, um, and this is for a few reasons. One, I'm not in a cold state. I don't need to worry about getting the fluid warmed up through the radiator. And two, if I ever do get anywhere near the temps being too cold, I could just put a little piece of cardboard on it or something to block the airflow and it will warm up just fine where I'm at. If you're in somewhere with a cold weather, you probably wanna put that cooler over here using the stock hoses that come out of the transmission cooler in the radiator. Okay, so think of it this way. You've got your transmission fluid coming out of the transmission, going in through the metal pipe, up through the radiator, and out to the transmission cooler. Technically, that's an after cooler. It is cooling the fluid after it's passed through the radiator. The, ra the fluid coming out of the radiator is only gonna be as cold as what the radiator is. By doing an independent system, the transmission fluid can get colder than what the radiator is, and it's not taxing the radiator system, giving it more efficiency to actually cool the motor rather than try to cool the motor and the transmission at the same time. Again, I'm in a warmer climate. I don't have to worry about cold starts in the morning, letting the truck idle, getting up to temp. I don't really have to do that. Um, putting a bigger cooler with your stock setup going through the radiator and out will help for sure but it won't fully benefit you if it's not independent so just keep that in mind when you're thinking about setting up a transmission cooler on your truck now there is one more thing you can think of when setting up your transmission cooler if it is going to be independent and you want to either be safe or you live in a cold area you can plumb in a thermostat. It's a little metal piece that's got ports coming in, ports coming out, and it will only open up the thermostat when it gets to temp. So it's going to keep all that fluid in the transmission while it's warming up. Once it's fully warmed up, it'll let everything go through here. I didn't want to have all the fittings and do all that craziness when it's really not an issue. And I've been through a few winters now and haven't had one problem. But if you're in a cold climate area, you can do a thermostat and have an independent trans cooler and completely bypass the radiator. So aside from all that, I ended up going with just some regular aluminum and I bent it up on a vise. I got some little rubber mounts that are um, threaded. So there's a little shank that goes in there. I put a, lo a lock nut on the back and then I put this with a little bit of blue Loctite going into this, the little uh, rubber cushion. So that's my mount up here. I use the hood latch bolt on this side. This one I had to drill a hole, but I had to modify the hood latch a little bit. I actually cut off too much, it, it, it broke right there. So I'll have to get that fixed, but um, I could have left some more meat on there and wouldn't have had an issue. Either way, uh, so right here, we've got the negative six AN hard lines uh, with XRP fittings with a custom bulkhead. 
Um, I bent all these myself and my friend made the bulkhead for me, which was amazing. It was a huge help. And we just went straight to and bent some brackets down here on the bottom. And there's rubber mounts. I don't know if you can see it. They're under there as well. So very simple. You just have to make sure it's on there rigid. And some people do it fully mounted up um, with no rubber, but I wanted a little bit of protection while I'm off-roading. All right, so jumping back here, I just put this radiator in. You could watch it in one of my other videos. So I have a little bit of residue that dried up. But so these are 45 degree angled bulkhead fittings. Um, it does have a compression style fitting where you slip it on and it's all ribbed so it gets stuck. But I put those hose clamps on there just to be safe. And these two go all the way down. And if you follow it way back there, it goes to the metal hard lines that come from the transmission. I'll get my crawler right now and we'll go right under and check it out. Okay, so these little zip ties are holding the hoses. And you can see right here where they join up to the transmission hard lines. Now I did top hose to top port on the cooler and lower hose to lower port. And you need to make sure that you do it in that order so that way when the fluid goes through, it cycles out the air bubbles. All right, so these silver um, lines right here, that's some heat insulation on the hard lines from the transmission. You can see they end right there and there. And that is to insulate them from the catalytic. So they're close to the cat. You can see right there, I just stopped just shy of where the cat finishes. But basically, they put it there to help warm up in cold starts and cold climates as well. Uh, but I did notice quite a big difference in a heat change when I put that insulation on the pipe. So I will link everything that I've gone over in the description so you guys could see for yourself and figure out what setup works best for you. And one last thing I forgot to mention, this is the negative six AN style fitting, which I said before, but the cooler comes with a straight fitting as well for regular rubber hose, which you can definitely do regular rubber hose, go through this straight down to the trans hard lines if you want. I would put a little protective coating around here so nothing chafes and splits. But um, I really wanted to do this build up as best as I could. So I did stainless steel hard lines, XRP fittings, ARP hardware, and the Dural cooler. Again, there's a lot of brands making coolers. Um, just know that 25 is about the biggest you want to go. The stock one is about six or seven. It is very tiny. It's about the size of a cell phone almost right here. So keep that in mind and build accordingly to what suits you best. All right, guys, so that is my transmission cooler. Um, I feel like I've given you plenty of information to be able to do it on your own. Obviously, top off your transmission once you do the cooler. Uh, you wanna plug the ports on the radiator if you're going to bypass it. And you also wanna plug the ports on the metal pipe that goes across the cross member because there will be fluid in there and it will leak out if you drive without it plugged. Don't ask me how I know. Anyways, um, a lot of this truck was built well before I documented anything on YouTube. If you want anything else, let me know. I'll try to film it. Um, there's plenty of other mods that you can see in the build walk around that I did quite a while ago. It's about a year ago. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that I haven't filmed as far as something in the style that this video was. And I can definitely do it. I just need to know. So drop a comment below and check out these playlists.